Good morning, Vanguard. It is great to see you in the house. Happy New Year 2024. Can you believe that? Can we give the Lord a hand for giving us another year of life? Amen. I am so grateful for another year of life. And I realize that the world is worse than I realize it is. And I want you to know that we're more blessed than we realize we are. Amen? And so in 2023, we deem that the year of God's favor for us as a church. And a lot of people said, wow, is this what favor feels like? Yes, it is. It is. When you enter into the favor of God, you enter into a battle that the enemy says that when you take up the word of God, he sees that as an offense to him. Every time you pick up God's word and you begin to read it, that is an insult to the devil. And I want to encourage you in 2024, if you did not pick up your sword in 2023, pick it up in 2024. Insult the devil every day in 2024. Amen? Let him know whose team you're on. And let him know that in the year of favor, 2024 is the year of fruit for our church. And God is going to give us fruit in 2024 from the favor that he gave us in 2023. And I want to encourage you as we enter in today to be reminded of what we talked about last week, that God calls us to be a resilient people. He calls us to be a resilient people. I want to invite you to take your program, and you're going to see on the inside the definition. I want to invite you to be a virtual evangelist. Good morning. Uh, Welcome to Vanguard. It is great to have you online this morning, wherever you're watching from. Thank you for joining us uh, in the service, and we invite you to share the service. What does it mean to be resilient? What does it mean to be resilient? It means you are able to withstand or to recover quickly from difficult conditions. And we've lived through a few. We have been this and in this, especially the last five months. So what is on the horizon for us as a church? I believe that God is calling us to be on the offensive in 2024 and to be aggressive for him. And so what I want you to begin to do, and I'll talk to you about Vanguard, but what I want you to do this morning, and if you're watching online, I want you to think about how are you going to be aggressive for Jesus this next year? Where are you going to take risk? Because as we live in a society that bears down on us and as we feel all of the attacks that come from that, you have a choice. You can give up your confidence, and yes, that is an option. You can shrink back, and yes, that is a choice. Or you can press in. And pressing in is simply saying, I won't give up, I won't give out, I won't give in, I'll keep showing up, and I'll watch God show out in my life in 2024. And what is it that you are trusting God for? What is it that you are asking God to do in your life in 2024? See, for me, uh, I sat down and I craft out some of the disciplines, some of the hopes, some of the dreams, you go, yeah, I'm just tired of dreaming. It hurts too much. Okay, well then die. See how painful that is. See how painful that is. Living is less painful than dying. So get back in the game. Get to living. Rise up and become who God has called you to be. Yesterday, I had the privilege of talking to an unbelieving family uh, that uh, a family in our church connected me to that I sold beef to. And I invited them into uh, our Vanguard Tri-Lakes vision casting tonight, and here was his response to me. I'm working and I'm out of town, but next time for sure. See, God is on the move in unbelievers' lives. 
And if we will keep showing up, God will show out. God has relationships for us in 2024. You think you feel uh, basically haggard from what you've experienced in 2023. Imagine going through last year without Jesus at all. Think about it. Think about it. 2024, the year of fruit, through raising up next generation of leaders, what God has continued to speak to me as we enter into the 27th year of Vanguard's existence. For me, as I think about 40 years, I think about hockey. You go, what? I'm not a hockey fan. But I think about hockey. Pardon the sports analogy, Candace. I enter into the third period. This is the beginning of the third period for me as the senior pastor of Vanguard Church. And I take these next 13 years extremely seriously. And I'm asking the Lord to give me eyes to see the next generation of leaders that will breathe and carry this on long after I'm gone, long after Tasha's gone, and long after you are gone. Who are those people? Who is God raising up? A distinct mixture of seasoned veterans and new leaders that God is bringing to us. I believe that God is calling us to pray this verse, uh, this overused verse, I understand that. This misused verse, I understand that. But let's don't throw out a verse because remember, it's in the Bible, all right? Don't forget this is in the Bible. First Chronicles chapter 4 Verse 10, Jabez, he called upon the God of Israel saying, oh, that you would, somebody say it, what? Bless me. Did you forget the source from which your blessings come in 2023? He says, bless me and enlarge my border, that your hand might be with me, that you would keep me from harm so that it might not bring me pain. I love this. And I'm glad these last six words are in the Bible. And God granted what he asked. And God granted what he asked. So let's break this verse down a little bit. That you would bless me. God is our source of blessing. The brother of Jesus, James, said this, every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father where there is no shifting. He doesn't change. God wants to bless our lives. You say, no, I think he wants to curse. No, 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 you live in a cursed world. God wants to bless your life. God wants to bless your life. I want to say that again because I think a lot of people don't believe this anymore. God wants to bless your life. So if that's true, and it is, by the way, then here's the question. Here's what you should ask God as you begin this year. How do you want to bless me this year? Don't forget the fundamentals. If he's the source of blessing and he wants to bless us, then the next question is, how do you want to bless me, God? How do you want to bless my life in 2024? From the little things to the trivial things to the small things to the big things. How do you want to bless me, Lord? In the physical things, in the spiritual things. What do you believe God wants you to ask him for in 2024? What is it? What is it? Well, I ain't going to ask him for anything. Why? Because I asked him for something last year. He didn't give it to me. Oh. Well, maybe he didn't want to give it to you yet. Maybe he was preparing you in a way. I get the privilege of starting 
2024 next Wednesday marrying this couple right here, James and Jessica. Would you guys give them a hand? That's a massive blessing. Massive blessing. Enlarge my territory. Now, what does that mean? You know, enlarge my territory. Here's what it means. Increase my influence for you, God. Increase my influence for you. So what do you need to do in 2024 for God to increase his influence through you? Not for you, through you. What does that look like? What does that look like? As you think about your life, as you think about the opportunities that you have before you, as you step into those opportunities, say to the Lord, Lord, I step into this, not because I feel all courageous in doing it, not because I'm not fatigued from the past, not because I don't have my doubts about the future. I step into it, God, because you are the source of blessing. You want to bless me, and I've asked you how, and I believe that this is how you want to bless. And so I ask you, Lord, to increase my influence. I ask you, Lord, to enlarge our territory. Look at your, um, if you have a program, I want you to look on the inside of this. One of the things that we're going to do in 2024, see, COVID killed all connectedness. And we've been working since then to bring it back. And I'll talk to you more about the other side here in a bit. But I want to bring you back to who Vanguard is. Vanguard has one common mission, to love people into a real relationship with Jesus Christ. We have five core values, being a lover of God of people, being a servant, being a prayer, amen, Pastor John, being a steward, and being a multiplier. Our seven core expressions are discipleship, teaching, worship, next generation, community, global missions, and multiplying. So the 157, that's who God has made Vanguard to be, and we continue year after year after year to live out that skeleton, that calling that God has placed on our lives. Look at this third statement from Jabez. Keep me from harm so that I'll be free from pain. Some scholars say that Jabez was actually praying, Lord, help me not to cause other people pain. Help me not to be their source of pain. And when I realize I am, give me the grace to say, forgive me, forgive me. Do you know how much happier a world we can live in as a church if we will forgive one another? Do you know how much happier of a world we can be in our families if we'll forgive our husbands, if forgive our wives, our children, and vice versa? See, his name meant pain, Jabez's name. And he's saying, keep us from causing pain and keep us from unnecessary pain. I believe God wants Vanguard to be aggressive in 2024. Now, to do that, we have to be very careful in how we go about that. So what does that look like for us in 2024? There are six action items, six challenges I want to give you today to guide us in 2024 as a vanguard who will live out the mission of loving others into a real relationship with Jesus Christ. So challenge number one, I challenge the vanguard body to become members. We talked about this at our Christmas party in our leadership. I want to invite you to look at this perforation again. And we actually, we changed the perforation uh, and we accidentally dropped off the place where you give us your name and information. So we apologize for that. Um, and we'll, we'll get that back on there next week. So just use the prayer request box. But if you have a prayer request, we would encourage you each Sunday as you come in here, 
If you have a prayer request, there's a prayer table, there's a prayer box. You can leave that back at the table, and Pastor John and our prayer ministry will take that and will seriously pray over that and ask God for blessing on your prayer request. And so here's what I want you to do. I want you not to be alone in any of the struggles of your life in 2024. If you have a prayer request, give it to us. Write it down. Tell us what it is so that we can pray for you by name specifically for God to bless your life in that way in 2024. Now, these six things, what we're going to do as a church is we're going to re-engage our assimilation process. You say, what is that? Let me point that out to you. Our assimilation process is I am new at Vanguard. Some of you are brand new as we begin this year. And we want you, we have a welcome table. We're going to get a welcome sign. We don't have it yet. And it's going to, you can see the table and the welcome bags uh, to my left, your right, in the back. And each week, we want you, if you're brand new, to come back there and let us bless you uh, and meet you. You can give us this information about yourself. Second of all, I want to give my life to Jesus Christ. I want to get baptized. I want to serve. I want to become a member and I want to join a small group. This is our assimilation process. So what I want you to do is take inventory right now. Of these six, where are you? Where are you in this process? And if you want to get all that God has for you out of this church, all six of these have to be true of you in some capacity. In some capacity. Now you say, well, I serve at Crossfire or I serve at... Uh, the Springs Fellowship Mission, or I okay, that's great. That's a part of our extended ministry as a church as well. That's called our global missions. But where are you serving somebody? Where are you involved in a small group? You say, well, what are small groups? Well, we have men's, we have women's, we have huddles, we have mentorship groups, we have uh, healing journey groups, uh, we have life groups. Uh, we have a variety of small groups that you can get involved in in 2024. And so if you need help with this, uh, we want to help you, and we're going to be available to you uh, each and every week as we go forward, and we're going to re-engage our assimilation process, and we're going to be very committed to that in 2024. Amen? Amen? And so if you're a follower of Jesus Christ and you're not a member of Vanguard, become one. Become a member of Vanguard. Become a part of this church family, and let's grow together. Let's be in covenant relationship with one another. Challenge number two. We're going to challenge the Vanguard body to join uh, the Jessica Legacy Project to create a legacy to reach the next generation uh, with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And uh, I think uh, Amber, where is, oh, there you are. Uh, Amber and, and some of our ushers are going to hand out. I would love for each of you to take one of these. And this is an extremely significant moment in the long-term plan of Vanguard Church. And let me give you just a little bit of background. This project is named after uh, Jessica, who is the daughter of Marty and Cindy Rauer, who is on our elder team. And back in February of 2023, uh, Jessica went to be with the Lord. And I had a distinct privilege of sitting with her, praying with her. And at the memorial service, uh, which was at the loft, which is uh, owned by one of my basketball friends that I play basketball with, Uriah, um, I sat there and I watched Cindy specifically. And I felt like the Lord said this to me, Cindy. And I've said this to her, Cindy embodies who this church is and who I intended for Vanguard to be in the way in which she went about dealing with the grief, the loss, and the sorrow and the long-term sadness and sickness of her daughter's life. And so I went to Marty and Cindy and I said, I believe that God wants 
us to name this project after Jessica in honor of the fact that she has children that grew up here, uh, the fact that uh, she was a part of Vanguard for many, many years, and the fact that Marty and Cindy are a part of our leadership and a part of our elders. And so uh, we walked through the process, and they gave me permission to name this after their daughter. Now, I want to say something I haven't said. I didn't want this to be named after my family. How come? Because I want you to understand that every one of us in this room have a calling on our lives. And we collectively come together as a church to live out that calling. And Marty and Cindy have modeled for decades what faithfulness looks like. And this is simply honoring two people in our church who have multiple generations who have said, I won't give up, I won't give out, I won't give in, I'll keep showing up, and God will keep showing out. And I take this very seriously. This, this little packet symbolizes the next 13 years of Vanguard's existence. What does that mean? What that means is on Vanguard's 40th birthday, 2037, we want Vanguard to be completely debt-free so that we can give it to the next generation with no encumberment. So that this house, this house right here at 3950 North Academy can continue to be a lighthouse for generations to come for people to experience a real relationship with Jesus Christ. And so I want to encourage you to read through this. And I want to encourage you to consider this. If you have an estate, if you have a will, I want to encourage you to consider tithing your will to Vanguard. I want to encourage you to, to consider giving a portion of your life work, your entire life work. I want to encourage you to consider including Vanguard in that. You go, well, I don't know if I want to do that because I'm not ready to die in the next 13 years. Just relax, all right? Maybe God wants you to help the church. Maybe you know of a means to help the church. Listen, we're going to see this to completion. This is going to happen. It is going to happen. I am asking God to do this through us and for us in Jesus' name. And you say, well, but, but I can't do all of that. That's okay. Just do what you can do. Just do what God calls you to do. Listen, I am excited to see over the next 13 years how God does this, how God does this. And I want to encourage you that this is not the end of Vanguard. This is the beginning. This is the beginning. This is the beginning. God has plans for us we don't know anything about. God has thoughts about us we don't know anything about. God is going to move. You say, that just seems like a big deal. Yes. That seems like a lot. Yes. That seems aggressive. Yes. 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 Yes, let's watch the Lord work and let's join him in it. I just would encourage you to read through this, pray through this. I'm going to reach out to people in the body of Christ, in the Vanguard body. And part of being members, because I don't want you to get a bad bill of goods here. Part of being a member is, if you're a member, I'm going to, over the next three years, reach out to you. You go, I don't want to be a part of that. Okay. Well, why are you here? Just for yourself? Because let me just tell you something. If I'm here just for me, I would have left a long time ago. I would have left a long time ago. And I just want to encourage you. We're on the cusp of doing something amazing for God. You say, yeah, but there's only just a few hundred. You mean like Gideon's army? Oh, well, when God does it, guess what? 
we won't try to take credit. We won't try to take credit. Vanguard was birthed in the mind of God Almighty. And he will sustain it for his glory and for our good. Amen? Amen. And I don't want you to go, well, I just feel manipulated right now. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if you feel manipulated. This is what a church is. This is who God has called us to be. And I don't want you to feel manipulated. I want you to feel inspired. I want you to feel inspired to be a part of something that's greater than you and will last generations after we're gone. Look at uh, challenge three. I want to challenge Vanguard Church body to serve someone younger than them. So who in your life are you serving that's younger than you? See, we raised our kids. We have five kids. We still have one at home. And we're about a year and a half from being empty nesters. And so we've been parenting for as long as this church has existed. So we've been parenting and pastoring for 27 years. Think about that. Think about that. It takes its toll on you. Parenting does. Pastoring does. It takes its toll on you. Right? How many times have I said to the Lord, I didn't know I signed up for this. I didn't know I signed up for this. One of the things that we did early on with our family is that we taught each of our children, our oldest Anastasia, you are Christiana's leader. Christiana, you are Joshua's leader. Joshua, you are Anna Larie's leader. Anna Larie, you are Journey Grace's leader. Journey Grace, you're in charge of the farm. <laughs> That's the God's honest truth right there. You can ask her. Each one of our children, we challenge them. Lead your younger sibling. Take responsibility for them. So moms and dads, listen, when when my children would get into it, I'd say, well, okay, you two are into it. You both say the other one did it. Listen, who's the leader? Who's the leader? Because whoever's in charge is supposed to be the servant to the one that isn't. And so who in your life in 2024 will you serve that's younger than you? Challenge number four. Challenge Vanguard Church body to take risks to reach the lost through personal invite. Our 20th anniversary, we put together a book called Friend of Sinners, Taking Risks to Reach the Lost. And I would encourage you, if you're new to Vanguard and you've never read that book, you can get it in the West Lobby. Read the story of Vanguard. Read how we began. I had lunch this past Wednesday with my pastor friend, Armin Summer. And Armin Summer uh, moved into our apartment complex, or maybe we moved into his, uh, when we started Vanguard. And he came out, and he was, you know, kicking the dirt around, and he said, uh, so what are you all doing? I said, well, we're going to have a cheap casino in the Springs, that's what it was called, uh, and we're going to invite all the lost people, and everybody's going to get saved. And he was like, just a couple of crazy kids, huh? I always bring that back up to him. And here we are 27 years into friendship, Armin and I. He was 10 years at Pulpit Rock, and then he went back to New Jersey, and he's retired and lives up in uh, northern uh, New York. About 2005, 2006, Armin became my prophetic prayer partner in that God would give him prophetic words about prophetic words that God had given me. And so for um, almost 20 years now, uh, I will get a random text from Armin and he'll say, hey, boom, does that make any sense to you? I said, too much sense, too much sense, too clear, too lucid. He and I went to lunch and I shared with him some of the prophetic burden that I feel right now and have felt for um, since 2017. And he sent me a text uh, on Thursday, and he said, 
I am asking God to let me carry your prophetic burden in this season. I sent back a smiley face. Thank you, Armin, for serving someone younger than you. And I will go serve somebody that's younger than me. Challenge number five. Challenge the Vanguard church body to look for ways to raise up the younger generation of leaders at Vanguard and the ministries they serve in. In 2024, we're going through a worship transition. Pastor Aaron has moved into what we call artist in residence. He'll be here next Sunday to lead worship. He'll be leading worship uh, for January, February, and March, one Sunday a month. And then he's wrestling through what his future is. And Aaron is in the culinary world right now, and I'm very proud of him for this. He, uh, for two years, he and I have talked about him being a chef. And this has been a passion of his. And so he is engaging that particular calling and seeing if that's what God has for him, or maybe God has other things. Uh, and so Aaron is stepping into artist in residence. Pastor Melissa, I don't think she's in here right now, uh, but she leads us now in the uh, associate worship uh, pastor role. And then one thing that we're going to do in 2024 uh, as we take and reallocate uh, Pastor Aaron's position is that we're going to hire uh, an associate uh, pastor of worship and young adults. And we are going to start a church-wide young adults ministry here at 3950 North Academy. And maybe you can start praying about if God wants you to be a mentor family to the young adults that God is going to bring us this next year. And if he does, then I would encourage you to let me know. Uh, we're not going to hire for this till sometime in the summer, uh, but we're beginning that process now. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to position Vanguard over the next 13 years uh, to, to seamlessly be handed to the next generation. That's our goal. That's our goal. And so I want to encourage you to be thinking about how you can partner in that, in that big dream, in that big process. And then second of all, uh, the Vanguard tri -Lakes plan. We are meeting tonight for vision casting. Some of you are in the room right now. Um, and I would encourage you that if you know someone in the tri -Lakes area, Invite them to come be a part uh, of this location of Vanguard. We're going to pray together tonight. We're going to begin to dream about how to reach unbelievers in the Tri-Lakes area uh, and to take risks to reach them in the name of Jesus Christ. And so we've gone to, we're going to a once-a-month weekend service uh, for January, February, and March, and then we're going to then re-engage. Uh, and our desire would be if we... Uh, find ourselves uh, in a position that we can do this. We would love to hire a location pastor for Vanguard Tri Lakes, and we would love to re engage uh, this particular location. And so, if you have questions about that, I'd love to answer that. Um, and then, challenge number six we want to challenge the Vanguard church body to take land from the enemy in relationships for Jesus. We want to challenge the Vanguard church body, to take land from the enemy in relationships with Jesus. I want you to hear me very clearly on this. The world has decided to change what truth is. And the church has decided to ignore the Bible. Okay? Truth is still truth. Truth. So in your families, you're going to have to decide if you believe the Bible or not. And if you believe the Bible or not, then you're going to have to get down on these and cry out to God in 2024 to give you back the family members that the enemy has taken. You can either agree with the enemy so that you can be in relationship with your family members, or you can get on your knees and begin to cry out to God to give you back the family members that the devil has taken from your family. And I want to challenge you, Vanguard, to take risk to reach those that are lost in your family, those that once knew God that are lost in your family. Get on your knees and begin to take territory 
from the enemy for your family. Amen? Come on, amen? Put their names in your journal. Put their names in your Bible. Put their names on your refrigerator. Put their names on the mirrors in your house. And as Jesus said to me this morning in Isaiah, uh, excuse me, in Proverbs uh, chapter 7, tie it around, tie it around your finger, tie it around your hand. Remind yourself, I am second. Oh, I'm second. Well, who's first? Jesus. What do you want me to do, Jesus? It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. Who has the enemy stole from your family that in 2024 you're going to say no more, no more, no more. I'm claiming this person for Jesus. Amen? Stacy McKill sent this to me this week. First she said, I'd rather you not tell anybody I wrote it. And then I said to her this morning, I was like, I'm reading this. Can I tell everybody you wrote it? She's like, "Uh, yeah, I guess. This is amazing. I want to invite you uh, to just bow your heads with me and close your eyes and listen to these words. Father God, be our vanguard. Make us a force to be reckoned with. We gather in your name and for your fame. We engage intentionally with one another and with your word. And we ask that you would multiply our efforts, that we would see the lost be found for our good and for your glory. We exist to radically lead our families and our community to seek you and to speak you, to set the standard through bold worship, to strive to do our part to make heaven crowded. We stand our ground at the front lines, expectant, and unafraid, ready to take new ground at a word. Use us to push back the darkness. We are branded. We know whose we are. Father God, we are vanguard, and we are a force to be reckoned with. Amen. Can you give Stacy a hand? Isn't that powerful? The collective beauty of this congregation is a kaleidoscope of your glory, Jesus. We are humbled by your glory. We are awed by your goodness. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I want you to begin right now to talk to your Heavenly Father. And I want you to tell him what you want him to know. Oh, I could never do that. I might say it in an angry tone. Talk to him. You can't have real relationship if you don't have honesty. You frustrated? You mad at him? You tired of trusting him? You tired of believing? You tired of hoping? 
You tired of dreaming? You tired of living? He knows. He knows. He knows. Forgive me, Lord, for my many failings. They're beyond counting. When I think about the many ways I've failed in the 27 years of parenting and the 27 years of pastoring, the enemy says, won't you just quit now? But it ain't about me. And I've done this long enough. I've been a parent long enough and I've been a pastor long enough. It ain't about me. It's about you, Jesus. And Lord, we need, we need your supernatural renewal in our church family. We need to hear from you. And we need to hear from you individually about our families and how you want us to engage in this year. Lord, I'm, I know my life is broken. A smile doesn't change that. Nice clothes don't change that. Money doesn't change that. But you became sin so that we who did not know the righteousness of God could become the righteousness of God. Isaiah said this morning that you come on a swift cloud. And God, we cling to you, to your cloak. A sacred, holy moment. Give us the grace, Lord, to talk to you this year. To trust you. Forgive me, Lord, in 2023. Forgive me, Lord, for the times that I gave you ultimatums. We just say to you in 2024, we dedicate this year to you. Use us as you see fit. As you see fit. And may we be quick to agree with you. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's children said, Amen. God